Welcome back to another episode of All Chiefed Up. I am Steve and I am here with Mike. Today we're going to be giving you a little update on camp. Looks like it was a hot one out there. Hot, muggy, looks like it was tough for everybody. Juju Smith-Schuster actually said it was the hardest practice he's had in the NFL so far, but we're just getting started. All right, guys, if you've been enjoying the content, make sure to hit that like button on the videos. Also, trying to get to 1,000 subscribers before the season starts, so hit that sub button if you haven't yet and help us out with that. Okay, let's just jump right into it. Day six uh, notes for the day. It was hot, as you mentioned. Um, the big story of the day was Sky Moore left with an apparent hip injury. Uh, he was running a little one-on-one -on -one route against Naze, it looked like, and he just kind of come up limp with a little hip injury. He did say he was good after practice. He threw it on social. But, um, yeah, man, what do you think about that one? Yeah, I can show you guys a clip. I'll pop it on here, but – Looks like it was just a contested uh, route, and he kind of slipped, and then Nazi kind of gave him the hit to knock him on down and, and end the play. And I think he just kind of fell, fell a little funny onto his hip, but it didn't look good when he got up. Like, he couldn't shake it, and he tried to walk it off, and it looked like it progressively got worse. So it is a little worrisome, especially because it's that hip, and we all know how the hips work. Uh, I think Clyde actually missed a bunch of time over a hip injury. So we're used to that kind of stuff. So definitely something not to take too lightly, but hopefully it's nothing. And no knock on Nazi Johnson. He's just playing hard, and, I mean, things happen. They did a little nine-on-seven period today so they could work on the run game. And, actually, the defense flashed a little bit during that as uh, Chris Jones showed some dominance during that drill. And also, Leo rocked Rojo one good time. And uh, hey. Willie Gay blew some up. Uh, blew some players up in the backfield so yeah man our defense stepping up during these 907s so, the first victim of death row had to be rojo right we knew that chanel wanted to put the pads back on and got there and start hitting people he's been talking about it he's been pumped about it poor old rojo had to feel the wrath of that one rojo speaking of has been awfully quiet i've noticed that they've really not gave him much love at all throughout the camp uh so i mean i'm kind of in this mindset like Surely to God, they're not thinking about cutting him or trading him. They could, because at this point, it's like it's becoming a trend in camp that Rojo's kind of taking a back seat. Rojo's not a big special teams guy either, and we heard Dave Tobe today said that they're looking at Pacheco to, to do the kick return. So, you know, Pacheco's pushing them anyway, and if they think they can free up a little money, they can get something out of him, whatever it is, I just don't think – I don't think Rojo can, can just, like, phone home and say he's made it for sure. Like, I think there's a little bit of a camp battle going on. Yeah, Dave Tobe actually talked to the media, and he really pumped up Justin Watson, which is a big thing to look out for because he's already looking good in the offense, might be working his way into that number five receiver spot, uh, especially with Dave Tobe full in form. He actually said that he reminds him of Kemp. He can do everything that Kemp did. We all know that Dave Tobe was a huge Marcus Kemp guy. And, uh, of course, he's gone. He plays with the Giants now. So maybe he could fill that void. He also mentioned Darius Fountain, which we knew he would. Uh, but he did talk about how, uh, you know, he's key with special teams. But he put Justin Watson right there with him. So watch those two tightly for, for those last couple of spots on the wide receivers. Yeah, we said that, you know, Justin Watson starting to stack some good days. He flashed yesterday a lot. He took our top play of the day. Um you know, Dave Tobe's going to have a big say when it starts getting down to those last few roster spots because he needs people to come in and give 100% effort in special teams, man. And if Justin Watson is a Kemp guy, that's what he's getting compared to. That may be a, a leg up on somebody like a Josh Gordon if it gets close, as definitely, we said yesterday. Definitely bodes well for him. It's going to help. So uh, Orlando Brown got back at it today. He didn't do the 11-on-11 11 11 drills or anything like that. But he did do some one-on-one -on -one drills. They had Roderick Johnson still in his left tackle. It looks like they're set on Roderick Johnson being that backup left tackle. Roderick Johnson may have played himself onto the 53-man roster because of this. Yeah, I mean, I think since they've had him there all throughout camp and everything, and they've been giving him you know, the benefit of the doubt as far as playing that position, um, looks like that he might make the team as a backup. So, I mean, the 53-man is going to get kind of tight. But you're definitely going to have to uh, look out for Johnson to take that spot just so he can be the backup in case we were to need one. Speaking of Orlando Brown, he also he left practice a little early, but I think Andy Reid said that's going to be a planned thing for a little while to get him acclimated. So, uh, yeah, like you said, he did the one on ones and he stepped off. He did talk to the media today. Uh, someone asked a question 
about, hey, man, what made you come back to camp? And we're going to let him tell you in his own words right now. Yeah, man, you know, I've, I've missed a lot of ball up until this point. And, uh, you know, obviously, man, I miss the locker room. I miss the coaches, you know, everyone here in the building. And uh, I know how important these, this five-day stretch is to Coach Reed and, and everybody here at KC, man. So, you know, I, I just didn't didn't feel right sitting at home, missing out on this. Uh, you know, this is something that, you know, I want to be a part of, man. You know, I was brought here to help win Super Bowls. And, uh, you know, this, this week is very important to our progression. Okay, well, it's our favorite time of the day. Let's get into our top five plays of the day and wrap up this bad boy. So at number five, we've got Leo absolutely rocking Rojo in the hole and just like destroying him. I think Rojo even had to hobble off the field. Like he yeah, took a he pretty did. good hit. Yeah, and then uh we're gonna tie it. Number five B is going to be Willie Gay tackle for a loss, man. He comes flying in and just drills the running back in the backfield. So uh, some Pacheco. defensive he, he, okay. he got Pacheco. Yeah. <laughs> so we got some defensive love at number five. At number four, we're going to do more defense. Juan Thornhill with an amazing pass breakup to prevent Corey Coleman from catching a touchdown pass. That was a wild play, dude. Did you see him flying in? Yeah, that was a really good play. It's a really good look for Juan because he's talked about how he's going to come out and, and be a pro bowler this year or something to that effect. And uh, he's just going to have a big comeback here. And the way he's working in camp, and the, you know, the production he's given, you can't doubt him right now, especially Corey Coleman. There's been a lot of good words about him last couple of days in camp talking about how he's getting a lot of separation from these defensive backs. So, I mean, that's no joke. If he's been getting separation on everyone and Juan Thornhill comes in and makes a play like that, then that that's special. Number three, we got a little Mahomes to Kelsey action. Those two tore it up today in 11 on 11. Yeah. Um, Kelsey did catch a short touchdown pass, but that's not going to be number three play. Number three play is going to be the pass up the right side to Kelsey, and Kelsey catches a beautiful ball as Mahomes scrambles out of the pocket. And it looks like if it was a real game, Kelsey would have probably shook the defense and ran it in for a big touchdown of like 40 plus yards. So it was a nice looking, nice looking yeah, play there from the definitely, guys. definitely a familiar play. If you're a Kansas City Chiefs fan, just that little roll out of the pocket, throw it right over the shoulder. It was beautiful. And it gave him a lot of uh, space to create after the catch. Uh, number two, we're going to show Corey Coleman some love. You just mentioned him. He caught a beautiful pass up the side, got some separation. Uh, busted through some contact. He would have probably ripped it off for a touchdown as well right there. So we're going to go ahead and give Corey Coleman the number two play of the day. Yeah, so Corey Coleman, he's making a case for himself as well. He's been getting a lot of separation from those DBs, like we mentioned a minute ago. Also, he's been mentioned as returning kicks and stuff for special teams. So he's trying to, you know, use both of those elements to make this roster as well. Hey, last but not least, we're going to play number one, numero uno. We got Miko Hardman, baby. Did you ever expect that? Moving on up. Miko coming out of the Wildcat, <laughs> you know, comes up the middle. He breaks a few tackles. He would have been gone, be it a real live uh, situation. And him and Mahomes just trot themselves right into the end zone. And Miko, as much as he's looking like George Jefferson lately, Miko's starting to pick it up in the last few practices. So that's good to see from Miko. This has got to be Miko's year, man. We've been calling it. Yeah, so we mentioned a few days back that they actually was running him in the Wildcat. If they're still doing it today, this is something that we could definitely see come this season rolled out into the offense, and it's not a bad idea. McColl is very shifty, very fast, and we know that he can make plays happen, and that's exactly what he did today in camp. Thanks for joining us today here on a quick little camp update. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to hit that like button. Also, get down in the comments. Let us know what you think about everything. Also, hit that subscribe button. Trying to get to 1,000 subscribers before the season starts. We're getting pretty close, so make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, hit the bell. That way you get notifications when we come out with new content. You can be the first on here watching, leaving your comments in the bottom, and we will reply to all of you. We got 850 subs. Y'all throw those subs around. Josh Williams is watching. Again, he's watching all the time. Always watching. Moving on up to the east side. Finally got a piece of the pie. Yeah, because I'm from my soul.